the coolest community in freight. I'm your host, Sydney Edwards, bringing you the latest tech industry news, warehouse updates, developments, anything going on in the reefer world and cold chain industry. And if you are familiar with Running on Ice, you know that I write a newsletter every Wednesday and Friday about these industry updates. And tonight is no different. But before we head to our special guest of the night, I would like to get to some industry updates. Now, shipping giant AP Muller Maersk announced a new coastal service dedicated to New Zealand, calling it Maersk Coastal Connect. In a press release from the company, they say that the product will help enhance domestic connection and offer sustainable supply chain solutions for customers. The company will be deploying two 2,500 TEU container vessels on a weekly basis to five main ports. The release says that the combined north to south and south to north capacity will reach 250,000 TEU each year. And Xerox's Park Company announced a new arm to the system with Evercase. In a press release, the startup aims to disrupt the global supply chain, technology, and food storage markets by extending the shelf life of food products. Now, Xerox explains that the freezing and thawing of food items like produce and meats, while necessary, can compromise the quality of the food. Evercase is a device that is placed inside freezers to keep food sub-zero without forming ice crystals, so the food keeps its original state. Now, by saving the quality of the food, companies would also reduce waste and improve revenues. Evercase is now raising a Series A round of funding. And Freeze Pack Logistics announced the use of solar energy systems at two facilities, one in Carteret and the other in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Now, according to a FreightWaves article from journalist Noy Mahoney, the company installed 3,135 panels at their Elizabeth facility and 2,462 at the other. And between the two locations, Freeze Pack expects to generate 2.8 million kilowatt hours of solar electricity in the first year. The article goes on to say that these projects are part of the company's push toward clean and renewable energy sources in ways to control cost and continue support to be off the grid. The two projects cost nearly $5 million, and FreezePack has plans to add a solar energy system to its Woodbridge facility by the end of the year. Now, let's get into the good stuff. My guest today, I am joined by the wonderful and all-knowing Ingrid Brown. Ingrid is the host of America on 18 Wheels. She is a veteran in the trucking industry, and when I heard that she was in studio today, I knew I had to have her on. So, Ingrid, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, <laughs> Sydney. I was like, wow. <laughs> you get quite the intro from me, trust me. <laughs> thank you. I so appreciate it. It's been... I was introduced to Ingrid um, just a couple months ago at our uh, last freight conference, and I was blown away by her knowledge in the industry. And so I would like to kind of go into a bit of your background. I know I called you a veteran in the industry, and that's true. Well, uh, 42 years, uh, and pretty much of those 42 years have been exactly what we're talking about, and that's the cold side. Uh, I love reefers. Mm -hmm. I love cold. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, if it ships in a truck, in a reefer, I'm your girl. I, you know, I don't know it all, but at the same time, I, I just love to be a sponge and educate myself and utilize that uh, in detail. But in those 40 years, I know that you've not only worked in Reefer, though that might be your favorite, but you've done dry trucking and what else? Well, uh, I've hauled livestock. I've hauled cows. Uh, I've also dry van, uh, owned a flatbed for about seven years. Um, Kind of a little bit of everything, uh, asphalt, mm. um, a little bit of every, but cars. Cars oh. is something I haven't done, and there's a reason. Um, Why one, not? I'm not scared of heights, okay? Yeah, okay. But I see myself a pulling a car on top of a, a the top deck, Yeah. and I got to figure out how to get out. Well, I'm not going to fit through the window to get out, so... Uh, I'm one of the woes that I'm going to end up on my head, so it's better that we all leave the car hauling to the professionals that do it. I always am that person that's driving behind somebody hauling a group of cars, and I'm like, but what if? But what if something fails in the equipment and a car just flies off? I, it's like an irrational fear of mine when I'm driving behind one. I wonder what they do. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple friends that... Hall cars, yeah. and this is going to be the first thing on my. Yeah, you have to ask after them. this, I'm going to ask them. You know what? What do you do? And obviously, they're not afraid of it. 
I, obviously, and <laughs> they can fit out the window. So today when we were going over a couple topics of what we were thinking about chatting about, I kind of came up with this idea in the title. I'm, I'm, I'm calling this episode Being the Boss of Your Product because we were chatting and as a driver with so much experience as you have, you were saying a driver is not only a driver. A driver is in charge of so much more than just getting something from point A to point B. So I would love to get into that. Maybe just tell me what is it that a driver really is responsible for when they're on the road? You know, safety is number one. We all know that. Uh, but the biggest thing that the driver is responsible for is the freight in the trailer. Um, that means the quality of the freight before it gets on your trailer, while it's on your trailer, and of course, getting it off your trailer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that not only makes the money for everybody, but that right there should be the reason for every driver to want a truck. It's not about driving down the road and seeing the scenery. And, uh, you know, first and foremost, the professional side and your desire and passion should be making sure that, you know, when you unload that load at the dock and they sign off on the bills and it says, woo, it's clear and clean and everything's accepted and it's great, uh, it feels good. Yeah. It feels like you accomplished. It feels like that you you did something right. Right. You know that. And you're checking that off the list. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. So kind of going into, you kind of had mentioned maybe when it comes to maybe the rejections that you're seeing, what are you seeing currently? Um, what kind of items are being rejected? Why might an item be rejected? I... Uh, I'm hearing and, and working with other drivers and seeing that the biggest rejection seems to be in the southeast region mm -hmm. more so. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking and not thinking. I'm, I'm looking at the ones that have told me this is they're coming from a distance. They're right. coming from where the product's sitting on the trailer a little longer, mm -hmm. whether it be from the West Coast where we've now moved produce from down in Yuma and down in Arizona, Nogales at the border. We've now moved up and started running produce out of Salina, San uh, Oxnard, and, you know, the produce country there. Um, which is one of my favorite places. <laughs> uh, so a lot of that rejection's being seen there. Um, a lot of the rejections that I'm seeing are berries. Um, you're seeing some of your delicate products um, that are, are being rejected. I, I sometimes question whether those rejections, when I see and hear, and have, I've looked at a couple of the products, that uh, myself is, is there an over purchase at some of the places oh, interesting. and they don't have warehousing yeah. or whether it's a simple thing as there's a bottom box mm -hmm. that has been dented or, you know, collapsed in the corner. And uh, I think we talked about that yeah. a little earlier of how that happens and why. So I would like to get into that because it almost seems like if, if, if people noticed that, if a driver noticed that was going on, they could prevent maybe some of those rejections from happening or they would, you know, reject that themselves right then and there to get new product moving. Exactly. And this is where I love to be my little guru. And when I say that um, is drivers need to be, and we're being allowed more, mm -hmm. before we weren't able to be on the dock. So if you aren't allowed to be on the dock, once you pull away, you can't check but your last two pallets. But that tells you a lot. You might not know what's going on in front of it, but um, some incidents and samples of that mm -hmm. is uh, checking for product expiration dates. And people go, okay, so if it's not expired, it's good to go. Well, you have to sit and calculate. Yeah. You've got to think. If it's going on my trailer and it expires in a week, mm -hmm. uh, everybody thinks, okay, well, a week. I mean, you know, whatever. You have to figure transportation travel time. You've got to figure how long it takes to get it unloaded. It goes in a warehouse. Once it goes in the warehouse, they have to do the transportation and and 
onto their uh, trucks, then it goes to yeah. the consumer. Mm -hmm. So what is that time frame? Make sure that you educate yourself if you're a reefer driver or if you're a broker or mm -hmm. if you're a carrier. You know, these are things that aren't just driver when I'm speaking of that. You know, a driver calls you and you're a broker and they say, hey, my expiration date is three days away and I'm in California and I got to go to Florida. And it only makes sense that it's not going to make it in time. Yeah, exactly. We got a little problem here. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times without thinking and a lot of times we, we really kind of don't think on that stuff. Um, another thing is, is you can see the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. If even if you can't get on the dock, but preferably if you get on the dock, yeah, um, you can see the quality of the product. If there's a little haze of purple on cauliflower, you probably have a problem. If there are berries that are a little hairy, you might have a problem. Um, checking your quality is a great big thing. Um, looking at your blueberries, if they look like they're plump and, and they actually have a pretty shine to them, you know, you, you are pretty well okay. Um, meat, making sure that fresh meat, uh, once it goes in, um, you can't, you know, you're not going to get on a dock with meat, of course. Um, but making sure that, again, temperatures. Mm -hmm. Temperatures are a big thing. And... I'll tell you about temperatures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> temperatures are a thing that you get on, on your bills or on your dispatch. Right. And they say, hey, we want these berries at 34 degrees. Okay, that means that not only do you pre-cool your trailer because you're going to maintain those berries, that means those berries before they ever get on your trailer, need you to need be. to be pulping those, those berries to make sure that they're adequate. That means that they have been brought down gradually mm -hmm. and, and that. Um, if you can't get on the dock, yeah. check your back two pallets. Climb your little self up in your trailer and do, you know, it, you know step out of being a driver mm -hmm. and be a professional of your product. Um, also, if they're not right, you're, you're the captain of your ship, mm -hmm. you know, you may have some brokers, and I, yeah, I'm talking to you guys and ladies, that if somebody calls you and tells you that the product's at 50 degrees and it's supposed to be 34 uh, and I'm not putting it on my truck, my reefer is not built and it is not to bring your product down. Right. It's to maintain that temperature. Um, so you have that right to, how, to decline. I'm curious how many times if you could even count it, that you have actually done that yourself, that you've called the broker and you've said, I'm not, I'm not putting this on here. We need, a new, we need new pallets. We need new product out here then. More than I can count. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm <laughs> one that I will literally stand firm. Yes. You're not going to budge me over, and I, can't, I guess it might sound egotistical of saying my knowledge, but I promise you, when you get to the other end, yeah. when you've had enough that they say, oh, what are you doing? This doesn't work. Um, yeah, you're going to stand your ground. And it's not a fact that it's a, a battle of, mm -hmm. of things. It's a fact of being a professional. It's a fact of making sure the consumer, who's you, your mm -hmm. family, who's me, my family, gets the best that I can provide of my part of the transportation part. And, you know, if, if that's the case and a broker is not, hasn't addressed this enough or they feel that this needs, you know, no, put it on the trailer. Yeah. Well, I hate to say I'm going to win because I'm going to pull away from the dock with none of the product on there. Right. Um, because I know very well they, all of these are, are fantastic in, and I can't, I can't think of anybody in the shipping of, of produce that isn't great about making sure that mm -hmm. that's there. 90% of the time, they've just pulled a pallet that hasn't cooled yet. Right. Uh, so ask kindly, hey, this one's hitting at 50 degrees. Could you pull me another pallet? Boom. It's a done deal. I know it's not always that easy, and I'm sure you get flack for it. And so I'm curious what some of your responses have been. I'm sure you've had each side of the spectrum here, somebody saying, you know what, you're right, 
let's get you something new, or the complete opposite? That, that's true. Um, most everybody, especially in a produce warehouse, yeah. is aware of it. But believe me, I have definitely had to fight my battles and, and dug my heels in, and they bring supervisors, and they bring owners, and everybody else. And once I literally use professionalism and mm -hmm. explain to them and go through the reasoning behind it, it takes about 48 hours mm -hmm. to bring that 50-degree product down to 34. So in that time frame, it ages mm -hmm. the product. Um, a little tidbit. Yes. If you're at 34 and you've got a load of berries, and I talk about berries because I love hollow berries, and everybody's <laughs> like, you're crazy. Uh, I mean, berries, berries are hard to haul because you have to be yeah. delicate. Is, you know, is... You don't open the back door to check to see if your pallets are up, or you don't open the vent door to see if the pallets are up uh, and riding okay, because it almost flashes right. those berries and it ages them and it 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 Ends it's up like a, them out. exactly. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's just little tidbits of you know that we learn mm -hmm. uh, that we pass down to others. I would say I'm sure, especially for new drivers, that they wouldn't feel, uh, I guess, that uh, secure enough maybe to push back on a broker and say, I'm not moving this because of these reasons. Um, and I guess, what might you say about taking that stand? Or do you think more and more drivers are taking that stand? I think it's 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, I think drivers are taking the stand, but I'm hoping and I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping and praying and I'm really advocating the fact of be professional. Um, when you address this and you push back, have that reason that you can can show and you can detail right. and you have something substantial of why you're pushing back. Um, if you know that you can prove why you're pushing back, right. You got it, you know, but professionalism and dropping the attitudes mm -hmm. and getting in arguments, there's no time for that. You know, we, we, we got too many great things going on in, in Reefer to ever do that. And I know when we were talking about things earlier, you kind of had a bit of a personal story that actually happened this week talking about this exact topic. And we won't name any names, but you ran into a group of brokers um, just this week, and while well, they had all these sort of questions for you about as a driver, you had one question for them. Do you want to ask it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're putting me on the spot because it's like <laughs> I had so many questions. Um, I actually was at a restaurant. Uh -huh. Is that what you're talking yes. about? <laughs> I actually was at a restaurant and uh, by myself and I was eating. It was actually here in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. And um, I look around and I see a shirt. Well, I had a gentleman say, so what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm here for business yeah. and I work for Freight Waves. Yep. And uh, they were like, what? And I'm like, oh, okay, you like production? I'm like, no, I'm a, I'm a truck driver. I, I drive a truck. And uh, it, it evolved around and, and I was asking how many of y'all mm -hmm. deal with reefers? Yep. How many of you actually have anything and, and deal with produce? And how do you, you know, what do you do? Yeah. Um, and it was amazing because it was from three months to 13 years. And I was asking a multiple questions, so right. I'm like trying to figure out which one you're wanting <laughs> that, that triggered with you is, you know, how are you dealing with, with reefers? Are you, are you backing drivers mm -hmm. with reefers? Uh, you know, when I say reefer, a lot of people say reefer, and I'm like, that's refrigerated freight. So anybody watching this, <laughs> Reefer is refrigerated freight. Hey, we, were, so. we were thinking about naming the show Reefer Related, but <laughs> we thought maybe it wouldn't get their right audience. <laughs> yeah, so 
Is there anything in particular? So specifically, that we were... I was thinking of your question to say, hey, if a driver has a product that comes in, it's supposed to be 34 degrees. What do you do? But they're marking it at 50 degrees, and that driver says, I'm I don't know if I should it. keep this or not. What do you do? <laughs> yes, that was my question. And I had <laughs> actually one person that literally mm -hmm. underst or didn't understand that a reefer wasn't for cooling your product. It's to maintain It's to maintain your product. Sorry about that. But no, yes, no. I mean, the, the, the person literally hasn't acquired the knowledge mm -hmm. in that side of transportation to understand. A reefer maintains. Uh, and, you know, they're like, well, you cool the reefer down and you pre-cool it, so it should be good to go and it right. should be where, you know, I mean, it's going to take care of the product. No, it's to maintain it. It's to preserve it. Mm -hmm. um, I've hauled tomatoes out of South Florida, out of Immokalee. And the buyer mm -hmm. has called me, not the broker, but the actual buyer has called and said, hey, Ingrid, I want you to move these tomatoes from 55 degrees to 67 degrees because I need them riper. Oh, interesting. To get to my, to my location. Would that and work I was like taking that? it direct to him, which it does. Oh. It's like setting it out on your kitchen yeah. counter. You know, you leave it out at a higher temperature than the 55, and it's going to ripe. But that's exactly what happens when the temperature isn't Absolutely. controlled the whole time. Absolutely. Yep. There we go. <laughs> so I feel like, and maybe this is something we should save for another, we can, I feel like we could just go so much more into it, but it just seems like there might be this, this disconnect between you know, a driver and a broker, a driver and shipper, whoever, and um, not that that's not being fixed, of course, with conversations like this, but um, maybe it would just be helpful for people to kind of have those conversations more so and, and see the side of where we're, we're working with when it comes to drivers and why they don't want to move thing, items like this for these reasons and maybe why the broker thinks, well, it's okay to move things this way. Um, I feel like Maybe there's a, a bit of a, a line we need to kind of mesh. So we kind of see all sides of the of the business. And I call that bridging the gap. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm doing with the Miracle on 18 Wheels. And mm -hmm. that's why I was like, you know, this is what I want to do is, and, and I think you heard me talking earlier. Mm -hmm. I would love, and anybody that is listening, I would love to come to a brokerage mm -hmm and spend half a day, day, whatever it takes to sit down with brokers and explain why we drivers do some of the things that might make some of y'all not understand and our mm -hmm. choices, you know. Our pushback isn't because we're trying to be difficult. Right. Our pushback is because for me, I have a reason. And for drivers, drivers have to also start educating themselves so that they can help mm -hmm. bridge that gap. Yep. And I think with what you're doing and how you're doing it, which is amazing, I think this is exactly how we do that. Any last, while well, I've just got you for this last uh, minute or two, any last words of advice or wisdom to reefer drivers specifically out there? Know your product. In other words, do your homework. Uh, don't go to social medias without making sure you're dealing with people that are educated and experienced in this. So make sure that your product from the time it goes on your trailer, while it's on your trailer, and when it comes off your trailer is your main priority other than your safety. Perfect. And we talked about America on 18 Wheels. Where can people find out more about you? I go to backthetruckup.com. Come to FreightWaves.com. Uh, you can find me on any social platform. And, hey, I love people. So what can we see you doing maybe next week? Any plans so far? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> you know what? We're going to continue bridging that gap. Yes. That's every week. I'm not going to stop until I see some results of bridging the gap. Which we're making, we're making some headway. We are, right? Absolutely. I mean, this is the way we do that. Yes. 
And uh, I think that, you know, we've never at Freight Waves that I know of, maybe mm-hmm. you can tell me, I don't know that we've really ever brought the driver. Yeah. Uh, we have James and Justin have backed the truck up that's working with myself and, right. and Dooner and Vincent. But I don't think that we have really ever brought the drivers on. And let's bring more drivers to you and let's bridge it. Let's do it. Well, thank you so much, Ingrid. It's always a joy to have you in studio here on Running on Ice. Um, It's been a great interview with you, and I just can't wait to hear more from you. So thank you so much. Thank you. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, I will have Running on Ice, the newsletter, written tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern. You can find out more at FreightWaves.com. You can subscribe and get more on Running on Ice. (laughs) 